CJ. And this your girl, Rena and Saclara. Make sure y'all subscribe to CJ, Rena and Saclara. All right, today we got a reaction video on Geography Now. Haiti. Guys, don't forget to donate the bottle so we keep going, going to go. I know y'all ready, we're ready, y'all ready. Yes. Let's get it. You know, I've actually been to Haiti. Funny story, I was the only one in my mission group that didn't take any shots or medications, and I ended up being the only one that didn't get sick. Oh! Geography. Now, hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Haiti is like the smallest country with the most intense history. Seriously, this little guy, barely larger than the size of Israel, including the West Bank and Gaza, essentially changed the entire face of Western society. Lots to talk about, so let's just jump in. Ah, Haiti, you're like a candle in a hurricane that just won't be put out. First of all, <laughs> Haiti is located in the western third island of Hispaniola, shared with the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean Sea, just east of Cuba and Jamaica, west of Puerto Rico, and south of the Turk and Caicos Islands. At its narrowest point, Haiti is only about 32 kilometers wide along the border with the DR. The country is divided into 10 departments and the capital, Port-au-Prince, located just at the beginning of the Timburan Peninsula, or this long landmass protruding into the sea. Speaking of which, because of the way the country is shaped, Haiti actually has the second longest coastline in the Caribbean after Cuba. People say Haiti is shaped like a horseshoe, however, I personally believe it looks more like a deformed anorexic Pac-Man trying to eat <laughs> all those yellow pellet things. <laughs> yellow pellet thing is also anorexic. The largest cities outside <laughs> the Prince area would be Cap Haitien and Gonaive, and the country's busiest and only two international airports, Port au Prince, Toussaint Louverture International, and Cap Haitien's interestingly named Hugo Chavez International Airport. They made a deal with the Venezuelans, yada yada, they named it after the guy. <laughs> there are six main islands. The largest one, Gonaive, Ville Vache, the two Kayamit Islands, Grand Cay, and Tortuga Island, which used to be a pirate headquarters that hosted the Brethren of the Coast, an international pirate community. Yeah, Johnny Depp and the crew were not too far off from the truth. Honestly, I stopped watching those movies after the third one. I mean, I get it. Squid Face wants revenge, and Kira Knightley becomes the king. Done. Stop adding more plot lines. Otherwise, the only dispute they have is with the U.S. over this little guy, Navassa Island, off the southwestern coast. The border with the DR is marked off by a series of river systems, like the Libon in the center, or the pleasantly named Massacre River in the north, and a long stretch of the 45 highway that both countries share, so on either side you can view a different country. The three main road entrances into the DR are Ansapitre in the south, the eight highway along Lake Etan Sumatra, and the sixth highway entering into Dajabon in the north. Otherwise, some notable sites might also include places like the Sans Souci Palace Ruins, wow. the Maron Statue of the Unknown Slave, the Marche en Fer, or the Iron Market, the Mupanan Haitian National Museum, Fort Jacques, the Atis Resistance Contemporary Sculpture wow. Museum that uses real human Ooh. bones with metal, the Jubilee Voodoo Monument in Ansa Fleur, and the crown jewel of the country, yes. Citadel La Ferrière, the largest fortress in the Western Hemisphere, built by 20,000 people to defend against the French. In addition, there are surprisingly beautiful beaches all over. Cool. But that info belongs in the next segment. Concessano Papital. <laughs> Now, Haiti gets a lot of flack for its land controversies, and we'll explain why in a little bit. First of all, Haiti is the most mountainous country in the Caribbean, with numerous chains and massifs defining the interior structure of the land. You have the seven wow. main belts, the Massif Nord, the Montagne Noire, the Center Plateau, the Chaine de Mathieu, the Chaine de Trudeau, not Trudeau, Trudeau, there's the, Trudeau. the Massif de la Haute, and the Chaine de la Selle, where the tallest mountain, Pic de la Selle, can be found. Only the North Massif and South Massif on the Timburan Peninsula retain Haiti's concentrated rainforests, where you can find the national animal, the Hispanic. Whereas the rest of the country is mostly drier and sparsely forested mountain terrain. This is partially because for the longest time, Haiti has been dealing with a huge deforestation problem. About 60% of the population's domestic energy production is still heavily dependent on charcoal. Most media outlets get Haiti's forest cover percentage drastically incorrect, some citing it as low as 2%. Okay, that's like less than the United Arab Emirates. Seriously, mainstream media, get your act together. The point is, whatever the actual percentage is, you can still see trees in Haiti. And in the worst parts, it's more like grassy hills with patchy tree clouds. Instead of like wide, desolate mounds of dirt. Nonetheless, deforestation has like caused a and like a problems all over the country in the past century. Add with that pesky hurricanes and the occasional earthquake, and bam, you have the country with the worst luck in the Americas. This is because wow, Haiti, and even more unfortunately, the capital, Port au Prince, lies directly on the Enriquillo Plantain Garden Fault Zone, a lateral shifting fault which is part of the Caribbean tectonic oh, plate that grinds God. against the North American plate. Worst wow. possible position ever. But hey, yes. I feel you, Haiti. I live close to the San Andreas Fault, and we're due for a big one that will basically kill everyone so high five these fault lines oh. are also pretty much the reasons why the wow. largest lake not in this way or no. Etan Sumatra, not the no. twin lake of the drs and Riquillo was formed both are saline brackish water lakes that harbor flamingos and crocodiles and flamingos that the crocodiles feed off of otherwise the longest river
over in Haiti and all of Hispaniola, the Antiponite River, starting in the DR, until it empties into the yeah. Coco Nile. <laughs> Plain de yeah. Natoponite is the most important area for crops where most of Haiti's agriculture comes from. However, most of their economy is actually driven by textiles, not food crops. About two thirds of the population don't even have formal jobs. Most people make income under the table or freelance or day labor gigs. Remittance money from family members abroad also fuels about 20% of the national GDP alone. Speaking of that, Haiti is known for having some really good food. Like, I know you guys are in poverty, but man, when you have food, you know how to cook it. <gasps> did he just make a poverty joke? Yes, I did, because it was used lightly based off of statistical data that was not grounded in my opinion and not used for the purpose of defamation. Amazing foods like tom tom, poulak noir, cassava bread, that looks pretty good. a disputable national dish, soup jumou, or pumpkin soup. Also around Fort Dimanche, you can find the famous dirt cookies made of dried clay, cookie? originally used as a cheap food source to help people get minerals, even though they kind of really offer little nutrition. Also, Haitian geography, is it true? Do you guys really make spaghetti shakes? Rapid fire around, other notable points of interest include the Quote Marie Jean Cage, the Bassin Blue Beach, Labadie, various waterfalls like wow. Bassin Zin, so That's Azurin, beautiful. the old wow. waterfalls where there's a yearly voodoo pilgrimage where the believers ask Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel and her voodoo counterpart Erzuli for healing. Yeah, you heard that last part right. I know you're dying to hear more about the voodoo stuff. Well, you're in luck because now we're going to transition into... <laughs> Haiti was once called the Pearl of the Caribbean, as it was the richest part of the French Empire. Today, things look a little different. First of all, Haiti has just under 11 million people and is the third most populous country in the Caribbean. About 95% of the country is ethnically black, and the remaining 5% is mostly made up of mixed and white Haitians, mostly of French descent. They also use the Haitian gold as their currency, they use the Type AB American-style plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. But be careful though, because Haitians also use the word dollar to refer to five goods, not an American dollar. It's a little confusing. Now let's get to the fun stuff. What exactly oh. makes a Haitian person so special, and how did Haiti become what it is today? This is a very long-winded question rooted in history, but in the quickest way I can put it, Tainos, Columbus, mm. French, slaves, voodoo prophecy, revolt, French, masters killed, independence, then France was like, pay a fine or avoid war, they agree, crazy dictators, even temporary monarchs arise, they attack, colonize, and heavily tax the DR for a short period of time, DR gets angry and fights back, Haiti resorts to paying debt mostly in trees, finally in the 40s they wow. finish paying off the debt and the economy is absolutely decimated at this point. Essentially, Haiti was not only just the first black republic, but also the first nation state to have a successful slave revolt, banned slavery in the Western world and played a huge pivotal role in disrupting the whole international order of the 19th century by starting a chain of events that would eventually end the Atlantic slave trade. Unfortunately, this is kind of where the good news stops for Haiti. Haiti's revolt came at a huge price. Their history would soon be followed by embargoes, invasions, military occupations, dictatorships, not to mention natural disasters like earthquakes, hurricanes, the occasional cholera outbreak, and a merciless wow. series of unfortunate events. Yeah, y'all Baudelaire kids ain't got nothing on Haiti, okay? Oh, your rich parents died, boo-hoo. Yeah, try having nothing and having everyone die, including you. Haiti's history was both groundbreakingly defiant and revolutionary, wow. but also very violent and riddled with treachery and suffering. Former President President Jean-Claude Duvalier, also known as Baby Doc, was quoted for saying, it is the destiny of the people of Haiti to suffer. I mean, that was the leader of their country saying that. Yeah, thanks for that bout of reassurance. Nonetheless, struggles aside, Haiti is absolutely rich in culture. One thing you kind of have to understand about Haiti is that it is very Afrocentric. Other Caribbean states like Cuba and the Dominican Republic might identify closer with their European roots rather than their African ones. However, Haiti, it's just like Kanye West once said, black is the new black. Uh, did you just quote Kanye West? Yes, I did, and I'm sorry, I will never do that again. As tough Please, as no. get, Haitians <laughs> are super proud of who they are and where their ancestors came from. One of the most distinguishing facets of Haitian culture would be the language. Today, there are two official languages, French, the language of the elite and business class, and as of 1987, Haitian Creole became the second language, making Haiti the largest Creole-speaking people group in the world. The spelling is almost completely phonetical and has a grammar and syntax structure of its own. For example, in French, you would say, c'est mon Ami. But in Haitian Creole, you would say, ça c'est un moi. In French, il va en travail le matin. In Creole, il allait travail non matin. Nonetheless, if a Haitian person were to go to France, they could still probably articulate everything they would want to say in Creole, and with enough patience and listening, they could survive. Otherwise, the one thing that always seems to be synonymous with Haitian culture to the outside world would be voodoo. Voodoo is one of the official religions in Haiti. However, it's hard to get an exact number of how many adherents there are, as Haitian voodoo has been heavily synchronized with Catholicism and Indian beliefs. Now, there are different types of voodoo rituals and rites, but essentially they believe that during a ceremony, a god inhabits the body of a believer, which explains why you might see convulsing and erratic movements if you are to witness one of the events happen. Nonetheless, most Haitians will definitely at least nominally identify as Christian, with Catholics making up over half of the adherents and Protestants making up about 30%. However, again, it's hard to tell exactly which ones are very devout Christians, as the voodoo secretists are pretty prevalent. Regardless of the economic struggles, though, Haitians are never short of partying and enjoying life. They host one of the biggest carnival celebrations in the 
Caribbean. Oh, and Haiti is incredibly colorful. Everything from the tap tap buses to the paintings wow. you can buy on the side of the streets. Music styles cool. exist that in Ottawa, nice. as well as Creole Razan and hip hop. Dances like merengue and compa are common. Otherwise, some notable Haitian people throughout history might include people like Jean Jacques Dessalines, the founding father of Haiti, Anna Kaona, the Taino chief that met up with Christopher Columbus, <laughs> author Frank Etienne, John James Aldubon, Raoul Peck, Jimmy Jean Louis, Garcel Beauvais, Philemé Aubon, T. Weiss, and of course, Grammy Award winner Wycliffe. Jean, who tried to become the president that one time, but then he was ruled out because he hadn't been a resident of Haiti for five years, the minimum. Haiti likes to keep things Haitian, wow. but that doesn't mean they don't That's like to reach out to other countries. Let's find out who they kill with. Now, Haiti is today pretty friendly with everyone. It's just, they're like a little bit of an economic liability. The largest trading partners are, of course, the U.S. and the DR. Both countries also host the largest populations of Haitian immigrants abroad. Haitians love Quebec, Canada, and see it as like their francophone white cousins. Montreal even hosts a noticeably sizable Haitian community, and Quebecois tourists are not uncommon visitors. When it comes to their best friends, however, every Haitian I talked to has said Cuba and Venezuela. Cuba is like the on-and-off boyfriend of Haiti that flirts with her all the time. On and off smitten by Haitian <laughs> Creole music, even though they might not understand it, and have sent numerous medical professionals to assist the sick in Haiti. Venezuela was very impressed with Haiti's revolt and has shown utmost respect for their nation for a long time. They provide Haiti with most of their petroleum needs, and Hugo Chavez visited, praising the country, which in return got him an airport named after him. In conclusion, Haiti is probably the country with the worst luck, but with the most respect. Although negative images may still prevail, give them a chance. As the Haitian proverb goes, Sa pas qu'on a, pis qu'on passe où. Stay tuned! Honduras is coming up next. Hey, he had some beautiful waterfalls. That was like really beautiful. Oh, I, it was. I would love to visit. Uh, but where they are really suck. Yeah, it's kind of say I would love to visit. At the same time, I wouldn't because it's like uh, dangerous over there, and I'm kind of like nervous just in case something may happen. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. So yeah, if y'all have anything out there about you know Haiti that y'all want to say, you know, give y'all a comment below. Also, donate below, and also check out their video below. And make sure to subscribe to CJ and Rena and Clara. You know it. Like always, guys. Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>